All right, everybody. So today we're talking about speed and velocity. Let's look at this first conceptual problem to kick us off. A car travels at a constant speed of 20 meters per second. What does this mean? So I just want you guys to think about that. You know, sometimes we hear like 50 miles an hour or someone threw that baseball at 100 miles an hour or that car is going 120 kilometers an hour. I want you to just think about what that means. In this case, when something says it's going 20 meters per second, what that means is in one second, it travels 20 meters. So 20 meters in one second. Okay, so in two seconds, uh, yeah, so every second it has traveled 20 meters. So when we look at this, we can see D moves 20 meters every second. If something's going 50 miles an hour, that means it travels 50 miles in one hour, okay? All right, let's look at this next problem. A horse goes 300 meters in 60 seconds, then travels 200 meters in 30 seconds. What is the average speed of the horse? So there's a few things that, a few ways people might uh, think about this. But when we're talking about average speed, what we should know is this is equal to the total distance divided by the total time. So one thing that you're not doing is you're not finding the speed of this and then the speed of this next one and then adding them and dividing by two. You are not doing that. What you're doing is you're adding the total distance, which is going to be equal to 300 plus 200, uh, which is let's say 500 meters. And then you're doing the total time, which is 60 plus 30, and this is going to be equal to 90 seconds. And then once we have that, we put into our calculators, 500 divided by 90, and we get 5.55 meters per second. So 5.55 meters per second. And we can see that this is A. Okay, so don't add, uh, don't find the speed of each individual one and divide by two. That is not how you do it. Total distance divided by total time. Example three. So this one could be a little tricky. A jogger and a puppy are out for a morning run to the river, which is located four kilometers away. The jogger runs at 2.5 meters per second in a straight line. The puppy is unleashed and runs back and forth at a constant speed of 4.5 meters per second between his owner and the river until she reaches the river. What is the total distance run by the puppy? So questions like this where there's a lot going on, you want to kind of draw everything that's happening. So let me just draw four kilometers. I'm going to say, remember this K stands for 1,000. Like I have four, 5K. That means I have 5,000. Uh, so this is going to be 4,000 meters. I'm just going to put everything to meters. And what we have, we have two situations. We have this person here who's running, this jogger, running at what? 2.5 meters per second. And then we have this puppy. Puppy... Oh yeah, beautiful puppy. This beautiful puppy is running at 4.5 meters per second. And what's happening is, as this person is jogging, this puppy is running back and forth like this, and 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 this. And it's running with a constant speed of 4.5 meters per second. And we want to know when this jogger gets all the way over here, how far has this dog been running? Okay, so what is the total distance run by the dog? So first thing we want to know is, okay, we know this jogger here is going to be running with a speed of 2.5 meters per second and it's going a distance of 4,000 meters. When it comes to the puppy, we only know pretty much one thing. Uh, it has a speed of 4.5 meters per second. So now what we can do is let's figure out, we can figure out over here, how long is it going to take the jogger to go that 4,000 meters? So we're going to do speed is equal to distance over time. We have 2.5 is equal to 4,000 over T. And now we have T is equal, oops, 4,000. 4,000 divided by 2.5. And let's put it into our calculators. 4,000 divided by 2.5. And we get 1,600 seconds. Now we have another bit of information. Now we know that the puppy is running for 1,600 seconds. Knowing that, let's now think about the puppy. So we know speed is equal to distance over time for the puppy. 
Uh, speed of the puppy is 4.5. We don't know how much distance he covers. We know it's more than 4,000. And we know he's going to be running for 1,600 seconds because that's when the owner gets all the way over here. Knowing that, we could figure out the, this by doing 1,600 times 4.5. And we get 7,200 meters. Okay. All right, uh, let's, let's look at the next problem. So this is a conceptual problem. This is actually pretty difficult. You drive four miles at 30 miles an hour, and then another four miles at 50 miles an hour. Is your average speed for the entire eight mile trip greater than 40 miles an hour, equal to 40 miles an hour, or less than 40 miles an hour? Okay, so you're going 30 miles an hour for four miles, and then another 50 miles an hour for four miles. No. You would think, okay, equal distances with uh, different miles per hour. So it's probably just going to be 40 miles an hour, right? It's gonna, probably going to be 40. And that's what you're going to think right away. However, this isn't true. Uh, so how I want you to think about this is I want you to think about the time it takes. Okay, the time it takes going for uh, 30 miles an hour for four miles and then uh, 50 miles an hour for four miles. What you should realize is when this person is driving four miles, it's going to take longer for it to go four miles. Uh, it's going to take longer for it to go four miles when it's going 30 miles an hour. Then it's going to go four miles when it's going 50 miles an hour. This is going to be shorter. So if you now think about that, if it's going 30 miles an hour for a longer period of time, then it's going 50 miles an hour for a shorter period of time. Now you're going to see that, oh, if you combine the averages, since it's going long, it has a period of time, it's going longer for 30 miles an hour than 50 miles an hour, it's going to become less than 40 miles an hour. If that didn't make sense to you, I highly, highly recommend you try to do this mathematically. Find how long, it, how long it's going to be doing it uh, for 30 miles an hour and how long it's going to be doing it for 50 miles an hour. And then do the total distance divided by the total time and see what answer you get. Okay? Uh, so this is actually the answer that you get mathematically. So try that if you, if you feel confused with this. All right, last problem for this. Um, so it says rank at what point the object is moving the fastest and at what point it's moving the slowest. So this is a position versus time graph. So what we should know is it's going to be moving the fastest when it has the steepest slope. And why is that? Because this in the x-axis shows the amount of time it takes. So we can see in a very short amount of time, it goes a very far amount of distance. It, in this case, it goes 15 meters in a very short amount of time, in half a second. The longer it is, for example, this one over here, we can see that it, go, it takes two seconds to go 10 meters. So it's not as steep. So the steepest of ones will be going the fastest. So D to E would be going the fastest. The second uh, largest slope is going to be from F to G. Um, and then it's going to be G to H. And then it's going to be B to C. And then we can see A to B and E to F, they're both not moving. It stays in the same position uh, after a certain period of time. So it's not moving. It stays in the same spot it was at this point and at this point. So A to B and E to F, it's not moving. Okay. And now, okay, so find the velocity for each of the sections and the average velocity from A to H. Okay, so... Over here, it's not moving. So if it's not moving, that means zero meters per second. Over here, it's going from 10 meters uh, to zero meters. So what that means is uh, if we, we know velocity is equal to displacement, uh, whoops, displacement over time. Displacement over time. So this is also the final position minus the initial position over time. So if we were to look at this, it's going to be the final position from here to here is zero, the initial position is 10, and time is one, two seconds. So this is gonna be negative five meters per second, okay? I hope that makes sense. So this is gonna be negative five meters per second. Oops, from C to D, oh, this should also be C to D. Uh, it's not moving again, so zero meters per second. 
And here from D to E, we're going to have negative 15 minus 0 divided by 0.5. Oh, I guess that's negative 16. So this is going to be equal to uh, negative 32 meters per second. This is again 0. This is going to go from negative 16 to 0. So, and then that's going to be divided by 1 second. So this is going to be 16 meters per second. And this one is going from 0 to 14, I guess. So 14 and divided by 2, two seconds. So this is going to be 7 meters per second. Okay? Uh, all right. So uh, that's how you do these kind of problems. I hope that made sense to you guys. Uh, we're going to be definitely doing a lot more graphing problems later on. There's a lot of graphs with AP Physics C. So see you guys in the next one.